The CT scan we contrast will tell you that the tumor looks like any other tissue because that tissue will not absorb the, the, the stain they use to uh, show what's going on inside the body. So we'll not retain it because it's dead, just like a healthy tissue will not retain it. Only the tumor will retain it, and they will show the mark of the image of the tumor. If it's dead, it will show nothing. Everything looks like a healthy tissue, so there is nothing. Of course, even that is red the wrong way, and it creates problem. But I can explain to the patient. And that's the proof, the two proof. But they cannot go for the other test, and they are listing the post-treatment guideline that other tests that are normally used to prove that the cancer is dead or alive are not applicable to our case because the tissue is being killed by hyperthermia. So uh, the effect of hyperthermia is totally different from anything else. So you cannot use any other testing. If they go for other testing, then they're in trouble because they get wrong answers. Okay. Okay. You know, uh, uh, I apologize, but uh, you just reminded me of something else that I was going to ask and forgot to. If I can veer off this list for just a sec, sure. What you said, what you said about that smell of death. Now, now I've, I done read something where somebody was talking about uh, this uh, uh, certain type of honey that uh, that that, uh, that that they claim is a, is a, a recommended treatment for fungitating tumors. And, and what they're talking about is that kind of smell of death. But they're calling it fungitating tumors. Now, uh, well, first, uh, do, you, yeah, do you recommend some special kind of honey? Because that's what I read. Yes, we do, to, because that insulates the tissue so you won't smell as badly. Because if the tumor is out of the skin, either because it was out of the skin to start with or, it, or because you did something stupid that we didn't recommend after the treatment and that corroded the skin and exposed to that tumor, then you have the smell. And it's very embarrassing to walk around with that smell on you. It's the smell of death, like a dead uh, raccoon on the side of the road. So Ow. you Ooh. put... A honey on it, yeah. You put honey on it, and that controls the smell. Now, as far as the fungating, to, fungating, whatever, there is not such a word. I don't even know if there is in English, but definitely not in the medical. The only thing that the medical talks about is fungoid tumor, but those are special kind of tumors. They are not in the breast, they are either in the brain or on the ovary. It's not a breast tumor. What they're looking at, because somebody in the, in the Philippines that doesn't know the English language said something that stupid, what they're looking at is a tumor that has been treated with the black salve, which is a natural but is a corrosive, and corrode and bring the tumor out. Once the tumor is exposed to air, it grows even faster. But it grows and you can see the growth. The decomposition by that looks totally different. The coloration is different and the way it spreads is different beside the smell. So it's it just ignorance. People that don't know anything, they're really ignorant. They're uh, uh, discussing a subject way over the head just because the puppet master tells them to do it. They are showing their ignorance and their stupidity. That's all is going on. Well, I, I'm showing I'm showing my ignorance, that's for sure. Uh, but I, I appreciate it because, like I said, I I I, I did uh, see that come up, and I forgot to ask you earlier. But uh, no problem. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, but uh, the, there there's a couple more questions uh, left here. Uh, let's see. Uh, do Do you believe Do you believe you make any mistakes during any of your patients' treatments? No way. There is no way because we go over. All of it, all the tumors so carefully that everything is killed. Nothing can survive. There is no way that we can make any mistake. And besides, the, uh, the testing that shows no blood flow confirm what we did. But even before that, I already know that I killed everything because of the way the treatment is done. Uh, there is no escaping. And then there are some doctors that tell the patient, well, there could be some minute cells, like cells vary in, sh in size, human cells. But anyway, some minute cells that escape. Okay, let me ask you something. You have uh, somebody that dies of an epidemic. So you take all this body and you throw them in a common grave, close it up and leave it there. Okay? Do you think that if somebody is not fully dead and is not quite deceased and is surrounded by that body, closed in in an area surrounded by that body, you think it can survive? No. And neither can sell, assuming that there was one that survived. Okay? So, um, 
we are going to have, this is the end of the first hour, we are going to have a guest on the second hour. If you want to, you can stay on and ask me the last two questions after he talks. How's that? Okay. Let's see. I just had uh, two more uh, two more questions. Um, uh, okay. Uh, do you tell your patients after after your treatment? Do you tell your patients not to see a doctor? I caution them that if they go to see their doctor or an oncologist, they are trained one way. They have spent years of training in how to do things. That's what I already said, monkey see, monkey do. They are not keeping up with research. They have no idea what the new technology is doing. They don't even know how to use the technology they have. They don't know what the different type of equipment and testing really does. So they just do it because they're told that that's the way to do it. So if you go and talk to them and say, I did something different, this is what I did, they're going to jump on your case. And unless you're a person that is really convinced and understand what it is that you received, unless you are that way, you are going to buckle under and you're going to end up having things that you either don't need or they can going to damage your health more so than if you did it before you had our treatment. So, uh, we tell him if you must go to see a doctor, just be very cautious because they will not understand. They will not understand because they can't. They only understand what they study. Some doctors are honest enough to tell the patient, gee, I don't know. I, this is something. This is what I do. I was taught to do this, and that's all I know. I don't know anything else. I don't know what you're talking to me about. I have no idea what this uh, case involves. I don't know. Those are the honest ones. The other ones, of course, use the other approach and say, oh, this is quackery, this is nonsense, you have to go and be uh, poisoned. So what I do is caution them, just know what to expect and know how to deal with it because if you get chemo after this treatment, you are in trouble. Mm. That's what I tell them. Well, because that's what uh, your uh, 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 patient testimonials that you uh, put up on YouTube uh, and the ones you got on the radio show, even this feller that was just on, uh, they all kind of uh, repeat that same thing. They all say that they had to do their own research, you know, and uh, uh, that stuff that they was told uh, would have done more harm than good. Right. So you have to know, and you have to be the one in charge of your Health, that's what I tell the patient. You have to be the one that makes the final decision. You cannot leave any decision so important to your life to somebody else. Yes, they are the expert. Not really. They just have studied certain things, and medicine is mostly based on what you see. You see this and you do that. Don't think, don't reason, don't elaborate. You see this, that's what it means, you do that. And unfortunately, a lot of the testing that is available, even for cancer, is subject to individual interpretation. So it's not cut and dry. Nothing that is done in medicine is cut and dry. So what they look at as test results could be different things. But because there is the cancer diagnosed in the way, they totally lose the sense of reasoning. It's cancer, that's it. They go berserk, and everything else you get, because you have cancer, everything else you get, even a sore toe, will become a cancer metastasis. That is just their uh, training, their mainframe, their mentality. You cannot change that. So you have to be the one that has to worry about how you feel. And this nonsense about being hypnotized, well, it's not very likely that even if you're hypnotized, it will last that long, like years? No, no, not possible. Besides, it's not that the patients are hypnotized. It's not that I control their mind. That's ridiculous. Nobody can do that, uh, except uh, the medical with the fear of dying. It's not that. It's just that the patient that come to us after, sometimes after the first day of treatment, but certainly at the third day, they start feeling different. Something has changed. They have more energy. They feel great. They have appetite. They're going back to what they used to be. That is not something that I tell them. That is something that they feel. As you cannot make people feel. They feel something. You can tell them what you want, like when you tell them, oh, this is poison, but it's good for you. You can keep telling them, chemo is, is poison, but it's good for you. You know your body's telling you it's not. And the same way, what we do to them is telling them, it's good for you, you're feeling great. 
It's not me telling them that. It's our treatment. They can tell by themselves that it's great. 